Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I am here to do the video about the bags that I sold in 2021 and why. And I did mention in a previous video that there are a couple of bags that I have sold that I haven't, you know, mentioned in my videos ever. And one of them is going to be a complete shock. So if you're interested to find out what bag that is, then please keep on watching. For those of you who are new here, my name is Kim and I love sharing with you guys all my luxury indulgences. I do unboxings, I do reviews, and I really try to share any tips I learn along the way. So if that's something that interests you, I would really appreciate if you would subscribe to my channel. And with that said, let's get right into it. Okay, so you guys know I don't have a humongous collection. I've always kept the number of items relatively small and I didn't do it intentionally, but it kind of worked out that way. And I mean, I just don't have the lifestyle where I'm like switching out bags all the time and so the number of bags that i have is quite good but i did sell six bags last year <laughs> surprise and yeah and i did make some amazing purchases so following this video i'm probably gonna do a my entire handbags collection video as soon as i find the time to do it so the first bag that i sold in 2021 was the Fendi mini peekaboo. It was in the black lambskin leather with the yellow gold hardware. That bag was a beauty. Um, you guys know I have been going back and forth on that bag though because I got that the previous year and honest to god I think I only carried it maybe once or twice and every time I would grab it to use it I would just say oh no and then just like switch out into a different bag and I don't know if it was because of the fact that it was lambskin and I was scared to use it or it was because of the strap because the strap was the one thing that I really did not like about that bag. It was a little bit too thin. But then again, like I could have easily um, switched that strap out and used something else. So I don't know what it was, but although I love the look of the bag and I was wanting it so much for the longest time, the minute I got it into my hands, I it kind of yeah it just didn't feel right so i did let that one go i also sold the defender cover that i purchased for it and um i sold both of those to fashion file and i was very very happy with what i sold it for the second bag that i sold last year and this one you guys all know about is my chanel double flap classic jumbo and you guys know that i sold it I regretted it and I got it back. I repurchased it. It's not the exact one that I sold, of course, but yeah, I realized quickly that that bag was going to be missed. I did do a video on this cautioning you guys to really, really be sure when it comes to Chanel because with all these price increases, that could have been like a forever regret if I had not um, made the decision to repurchase it when I did. So yeah, that's the second bag that I sold and repurchased for so the third bag that i sold and this is one that i have not revealed to you it guys was my chanel gabrielle backpack so you guys know if you follow me that i had a gabrielle backpack in the black with the mixed metal hardware and i really really love that backpack when i got it i was so so excited and it was just an easy bag for me to use like i would use it as a backpack and i also found a way to like convert it into like a shoulder bag or a crossbody bag and i will link that um video below if you guys are still interested in that bag and honestly i would recommend the gabrielle to anybody i mean it is a really good bag but for me i realized that um i was getting a lot more use out of the gabrielle backpack because i was without my palm springs mini for the longest time my palm springs mini backpack from louis vuitton was deemed defective around the zippers and so i got it replaced with a newer model and it took a while for me to get it and so the reason i was grabbing the gabby so much was because I was missing the Palm Springs Mini and once I got the Palm Springs Mini back, I just did not reach for the Gabrielle anymore and um, I thought about keeping it just because of the novelty of the bag and also because I just really loved the look of it and I loved it when I carried it but as the days went by with me not even grabbing it or even thinking about carrying it, I thought oh, what a waste and so, so I decided to sell it and have no regrets but I still like if you guys are interested in the Gabrielle backpack, it's a really great bag so yeah I would recommend it. So the next two major bags that I sold last year were the Birkin and the 
Kelly. So, so in 2020, I added the Kelly 32 in the black Togo leather with the palladium hardware. It was in the retourne style. And you guys, that is such a great bag. I truly, truly love that bag. Um, I also soon after got the Birkin 30 in the E2 color. This one was in the Clemence leather and it also had um, palladium hardware. And I thought for sure that I was a Birkin girl. I thought I was gonna carry that everywhere and it was gonna be so easy just to like, you know, have it as an open tote and I knew I was gonna love it. But I realized very, very soon that I just grabbed my Kelly every time I wanted a bigger bag or my Jumbo even, but I just didn't carry that Birkin. And I don't know, I just feel like it's a little bit kind of bulky, so it's very wide. So it's not big this way, but it is like, Thick. so when I carried it it was a bit too it did feel a little bit too like a little bit cumbersome because it wasn't like flatter towards my body or anything like that and then also just because it did not have the shoulder strap which you know I'm perfectly okay with um tote bags I mean I have my Louis Vuitton um Speedy 25 which I love and when I had my Speedy 25 bandolier I never even carried it using the strap so I know it's not because it was just a top handle bag but I just felt like it just it yeah it was just a little bit too much for me and so I did sell that as for the Kelly I did um sell that one just to replace it with the Kelly 28 um the 32 is amazing and Quite honestly, I do miss the Kelly 32 from time to time because it was in the Togo leather and it was in the um, Palladium hardware. And I always think like black with Palladium hardware is just so chic and edgy and I really, really love that look. So I do miss the look of it, but I don't necessarily miss the size of it. So I'm much more happier with my Kelly 28. I don't really regret selling the Kelly 32, nor do I regret selling the Birkin 30. <sighs> Last year, I also sold the Neverfull GM in the Damir Abin pattern. And you guys know I sold that solely because I got the Chanel Deville tote and I am like head over heels in love with that tote. It's not as completely carefree as that Neverfull was. And um, so I do probably um, baby it a little bit more than I would have a Neverfull. That said, um, I had the Neverfull for so long. I mean, it was my go-to bag when I was, you know, hauling my kids around <laughs> around town and, and Ubering them around as um, Ren from Double X Lux and I always, you know, kind of like joke around about. Um, I was I was happy to let that one go and I sold it to a subby who has told me that she absolutely loved it. So I'm really, really happy about that. I'm so happy that it is getting the love that it deserves because that is an amazing, amazing bag. It's an amazing tote. If you have younger kids, it's really, really great as a diaper bag or as like a, a thing to like carry everything else that you need to carry um, for you and your children. So anyways, that is another bag I let go in 2021. So the final bag that I sold last year is the one that will probably shock all of you. Um, are you ready for this? <laughs> I don't think I'm ready to tell you guys. <laughs> Um, the bag that I sold is none other than my Chanel mini rectangular in the caviar leather with the beautiful edge stitching. <laughs> All right, let me have it. Let me have it. Yeah, I know. I'm so crazy, right? Okay, but hear me out. Seriously, hear me out. So that bag was really special to me in that it was one of the first major luxury purchases that I made after I had put my luxury spending on a hold. Um, you know, after children, you do kind of put that kind of stuff on a hold for a while, which is what I did. And that Chanel mini rectangular was the one that um, I thought, oh, it's time for me to splurge on myself, right? And so I got that um, back in December of 2016. So I got it for a great price because the prices back then were not crazy like they are now. And the version that I got was also really special because it was the 17C Cruise version. It was black, um, it had the really beautiful caviar with the edge stitching around it. And so that one was really special. So I know how highly, highly sought after that is and how valuable it is. And that I will probably never uh, get a chance to repurchase it if I um, sold it. So I did think about it a lot, but the thing about it is 
There have been so many occasions during the past, you know, few years that I have owned that bag where I thought to myself, I should sell it. And it's not because I don't love the look of the it's bag. It's a mini rectangular. It's not a bag that I really gravitate towards, which is strange because you guys know I love my mini bags. I love that cute square one. But even though I would grab for that one, I wouldn't grab for my mini rectangular, which is kind of strange, right? But that was exactly it. I wasn't really using her that much. I would only use her once in a while when it was like a special occasion. And when I did, it didn't give me that rush of like, just wanting to like look at it and stare at it like I do with many of my other bags that I have, right? So I think I had been hanging on to it for this long, which I'm really happy that I did um, because it really gave me time to like mull it over and really, really think about this. Um, and the fact that I still was willing to part with it, even with all these crazy, crazy Chanel increases that make you think, well, you know, if I hang on to it, it's gonna double, triple in value, blah, blah, blah. I still thought, you know what, I just want to let it go. And I ultimately thought about, you know, say I sell this bag and then I regret it and I want to repurchase it. Well, they're not available and they're going to be super expensive. So what are you going to do? And I thought about that scenario. And honestly, I wouldn't mind getting just the lambskin version or even a seasonal bag that is in caviar that is like a similar size. I just wouldn't. I it, don't have to have the mini rectangular is what I'm trying to say. So when it comes to selling bags and I don't want to regret it, what I do is I list the bag and I list it for a premium price and at a price that I think I will not regret selling it. And that's exactly what I did. I listed it very high and it's sold and the owner is so so happy that they were able to find it she almost purchased two or three other um caviar mini flat bags but she held out because she really wanted something like mine so she was saying like i held out and she regretted missing the previous two that she had just passed up but she was like so so grateful that, that she had found mine and um it was exactly exactly um, her dream bag and so I'm actually very very happy that I was able to you know fulfill that dream for her I know that bag is being loved I mean she sent me tons of pictures of her wearing it which I really appreciate it because it just shows me that she just loves the bag so so much and it gives me joy to know that that bag is rehomed to somebody who just is so so excited about it and that's how a bag should make you feel at these prices, right? Like if you have a bag and you just have it and you're hanging on to it for dear life just because you know you might not be able to get your hands on it again, I don't think that's good enough reason to hang on to a bag. It should be like so exciting. You should want to like, oh, I want to take this one out. No way, I want to take this one out and just have that joy when you see these bags. And currently that joy is in my cocoa handle. Like that's how I feel about that cocoa handle. I know I paid a lot more for it now because I got it after all these price increases when I could have gotten it a few years ago. And yet it still gives me that joy. It still makes me think, oh my gosh, it's so great. I can't believe I have it. And that's how you should feel when you buy these luxury bags. And yeah, and so I'm really, really, content with my decision to sell my mini rectangular um i have no regrets which is strange because i regretted that chanel jumbo so much but with this mini rectangular i have no regrets and i think that says a lot right i, I think it really does so that's it you guys those are the bags that i sold in 2021 and why um let me know your thoughts below i know some of you guys are probably thinking oh my gosh she's so crazy but i also got so many great bags last year and i am going to do my entire handbag collection video next hopefully so please look out for that video if you enjoyed this one please don't forget to give it a thumbs up subscribe to my channel and with that said i hope you guys have a wonderful week and i will see you in my next one take care everybody